Hi, Jenna. Good morning to you. My name is Nicolette. Hi. Hi. I'm the creator for the podcast called Your Worthless. Read that again. Juxtaposition of your very soul. So I'd like to say thank you very much for actually saying yes to me. Um, I, <laughs> true pod match, it was kind of difficult to get your timing, but you actually said yes. So I really, really appreciate that. And yeah, let's let's dive deep dive deep into our topic today. Um, I'd like to share to the listeners a little bit about your introduction, and then later we're gonna give you some space and time for you to you know share your story. Okay, so to everybody who's listening, we have Jenna Smith. She is the creator of the resourcing method that provides tangible framework for people to tune into their untapped resources in order to live a life full of purpose with deep confidence and self-trust. She is also an in-demand speaker, professional singer. Maybe I'd like to hear her <laughs> sing a verse. <laughs> a no coach. <problem. laughs> and an author. Wow, she wears many hats in her daily life. So, Jenna, what were you doing before you got into all of the above? Like, could you, could you share with us? Well, it was, it, they all weave together because singing was my first journey into um, spirit. So the, I'm assuming we're having a soul conversation here. Yes. Just based on the title. Yes, yes, yes. So soul within, basically. Yes. Yeah. And so <laughs> what, if I look back, it, you know, music, nature, I was raised Catholic, but where I felt spirit was actually in other places. And I just didn't know really? that's what I was feeling. I just knew that felt made way more sense to me than the so-called real world. Because mm -hmm. I could see in the real world that people were, I could see from a very young age that something was off. Really? With a lot of wow. people. Okay. Okay. Now this is interesting. Now you just picked in my interest. <laughs> what, <laughs> what, what, what's, what's, What's that thing or what are those things that you, that you felt that that was, is not right. Something's off. What are those? All I knew was that it fell off. And okay. what I know now is that people don't know how to be at home in their own being. Right. What are and we so saying? they're trying to be funny and they're trying to be liked and they're trying to get it right. And they're doing their job right. And they're making their mom happy and they're making money. And I can yeah. just see there was something off about that. Mm, yeah. But I made it mean as a young child that something was wrong with me. Because you're not conforming kid. to the norm. Mm. Yes. So <laughs> what's wrong with me that I'm not doing this normal things? Yeah. Okay. So with, without the wisdom and life experience and all that stuff, as a young kid, my only experience was I'm wrong. Mm. Yeah. So... Okay, um, I think we're going to jump from your um, fashion and then to some of the questions that I have about, about self, especially. So um, you said that you started off as uh, in, in, in the singing line, right? And I see here you said you want how you wanted to become the next Celine Dion. Oh my gosh, I love yeah. her. I, I actually it. work I... with her vocal coach now, Dr. William Riley. Oh, no, really? Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So, <laughs> I mean, so. <laughs> I love how much fun you're that's, having. That's, <laughs> I know. So that's the closest I can, you know, get to Celine just through you, to the coach, Wonderful. and through Celine. <laughs> <laughs> Um, yeah, so how did you go from wanting to, I mean, I wouldn't say that you I want you. to change. Yeah, you. it's not like you, you, you want to become so because I know that you're still pursuing music. I guess that's, yeah. that's innate, right? And then yeah. now you turn into becoming a coach for leaders and entrepreneurs. Like, yes. What was the pivotal um, shift that um, moment? I, it really <laughs> was a, a, so being a singer, um, I didn't know wasn't that glamorous. So the music industry, the really, but they made it so wow. <laughs> they do. That's the yeah, shiny part like the, that I the, wanted. The Hollywood, exactly. I want like, that. I wanted I, that. It's not what yeah. it is. 
behind no. the scenes. So <laughs> basically, especially in Canada, not to get too much into it, but once you have a record deal, like the winning, mm-hmm. you're owned yeah. by a company and you don't have any creative control and you don't actually make that much money per album. Um, no, and you could actually maybe. find yourself in debt to that company because of the commissions that they're taking and then yeah because if like that one album doesn't do well now you're so it just it didn't look like a great plan (laughs) and then and then that's only if you get that record deal Mm. um i graduated so i'm 41 now i graduated from university oh i love how candid you are with your age i love yes (laughs) people 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 normally that that shy away from saying oh yeah i'm 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 a little bit mid 30s or yeah me i have earned 41 i've been waiting to be in my 40s since i was a teenager i'm just like (laughs) yes okay i know who i am i i have a skill set i have a career i own my house like and not like you have to do those things if you're 40 but it's just i couldn't do this when i was 16 like the way that i can self-express is completely different now because i have all of this foundation so to me age is wonderful um for me so <laughs> um but Aging when i graduate yeah thank I you yeah. <laughs> i graduate i think that a lot of that i do weight train and all those things but uh, i get a lot of good sleep but i also believe that our spirit and this is what drove me to want to do this podcast because i like talking about how to put our spirit back into our lives and how to reignite and not have it be spiritual it doesn't have to mean you do certain things you that's spiritual embark- to the yes, you don't have to and, uh... <laughs> indoctrinate into anything. It's yeah. aliveness. It's a it's a being in tune and in communion and in relationship with the aliveness that is, and and knowing that that's who you are. Which, yeah. in essence, with your topic, if you know that and if you live from there, the ability to f- the opportunity to feel worthless isn't available. When you're yeah. in tune with your spirit, you can't feel worthless. They just, they're two different it's, things. It, it, yeah, it's just, it's, it's, it's just not, they don't, they don't, see, they're like, and so yeah, they don't that's together. Yeah. No, like, and so the only ability to feel worthless is if you're too, um, subscribed to societal metrics and you've lost yourself and you can't find yourself. Right. <laughs> that is oh, so that true. was so to answer your question fully, <laughs> the music industry didn't work for me. And then I found my way into personal training because I had to be the hot girl, right? So like I was in the gym all the time and <laughs> obsessed with needing to be what I thought I needed to be, which led me to a career, which then gave me the freedom to do my psychotherapy degree when I was 26, yeah. because okay. I didn't, I didn't want to just do personal training. It's a wonderful career, but I just, that it was, that was temporary and wonderful for me, taught me how to run my own business. Then I did psychotherapy. Then I was like, okay, I don't want to be like a therapist, therapist. Then that led me to coaching before, like, this is in 2000 and this is like 2007, 2009. Now coaching, the coaching industry wasn't a thing like this online thing. This wasn't, no, (laughs) no, like it was kind of talked about on Oprah and it was exactly, exactly like two coaches, maybe we knew two life coaches at the time. So it wasn't a thing. And then I did my coach training on ontological coach training, which is very immersive and intensive. And so ontology is how you relate to reality and Mm -hmm. how I'm relating to myself, how I relate to others, what I believe about it creates your reality. So it's creating change from like your... Within. Yeah. Like from how you relate to reality. Um, not just moving things back and forth, not just habits and mindset. It really is so much deeper. And then you use habits and you use mindset and et cetera. So by the time I was 30, then I now had like a career that was so random, (laughs) so random. It wasn't like, I'm going to do this. It was really just, what's the next step? What's the next step? Download. Yes. And they said, okay. So, you know, people people think, oh, you had, you had so much clarity and they, they project on me that I had clarity and confidence about the whole thing. I didn't, I just did what was in front of me. Hmm. I had no idea what was going to happen. <laughs> I had no <laughs> idea where I was going. I just knew what I didn't want to do. So that led me to this career, which I love because between psychotherapy, which we really need psychotherapy is therapy, like how to 
emotionally heal, how to look at your family patterns, how to manage your mind, right? To a minimum, how to actually feel feelings and use yeah. them. And then the next step is to use them as energy and use them as intelligence, mm -hmm. which is in the book I'm writing. Um, so it is, so how I got here was by following like, what's the next step. And, and I, I get, not everyone knows how to do that. They just, cause there's hearing the noise of, of all that. And then how do you know what that next step is? Cause a lot of people will rush to the next step by the next step. Um, that's not their soul. <laughs> that's their, yes. I need to change that's things true. now. I need to leave what's now to get yes. here. I wasn't doing that. I was just doing what was in front of me next. That resonated so much with what Oprah used to say. Like I've had to be very, very still and figure out what it is the next best move that I need to do. And then you create, you create the next best move and then you move, you move, you move. And then you oh. focus. Yeah. Yeah. And then you focus. So what do you think are the common problems of people today in terms of how they see or believe about themselves? Like, I know we, we talked about this just now, but what do you think are the common problems? Societal norms, metrics, comparison. Oh well, the number one is they don't see <laughs> oh themselves. They, and it's like, <laughs> you can talk about this all day. Oh my God. It, yeah. The fundamental problem is they don't see themselves. Mm. They don't see themselves. How, it's, how, so why are they doing that? They're seeing others and then projecting them to themselves. Oh, I gotta be, I gotta be like that. They're seeing programs. So I should be skinny. I should have this. I shouldn't be whiny. I shouldn't be this. There's so much judgment and preconceived notions that we subscribe to and then everybody's so busy trying to um worry about what other people think construct who they need to be in the world that day whether they it's conscious or unconscious that they're not actually there and they don't even realize everyone else is doing the same thing for the most part and then every so often you meet this weirdo person who's just happy being who they are even if they're grumpy so it doesn't mean you're just freaking doing cartwheels all the time. Like being your true nature could mean a, a, a myriad of different options of your true nature. It doesn't have to be, um, that's another program, right? Like uh, extroverted and outgoing people think, oh, I should be that way. No, like maybe you're just that calm, quiet one. And as you mm -hmm. own that, it becomes yeah. magnetic. And, but people mm -hmm. don't know that. that. So I like using nature as a teacher. So okay. the trees don't compare branches. They're not like, oh, that guy's branches are bigger than mine. Like, <laughs> they just grow. Yeah. <laughs> right? Yeah. yeah. So, like, to me, it's like, if people could knew deep, deeply that they were enough, and they, and then they could make mistakes, and then they could be in grumpy moods, but come back faster, and come back to who they really are. If they could do that, they would relate completely differently they wouldn't have the addictions. They wouldn't have a lot of the pain that is caused from all of this flailing mm. from not knowing who they really are. And it's not their fault. Like it isn't, everyone is just trying to survive. That's true. So I want to link back to that thing. Um, when I, I read the introduction just now, you said about untapped resources, right? Yeah. So one of these untapped resources that 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 are innate in her, in every human being your Please. body <laughs> okay. like your body yeah. is here and it was free like you know you can have a conversation <laughs> with your parents about that <laughs> but we all have a body mm -hmm. and we are in our heads and the body's sort of this annoying thing that you have to feed and sleep and and so people that are in their heads too much really don't have a connection to the the intelligence of the body where your instinct lives where your subconscious mind that processes mm -hmm. is 40,000 times faster than the conscious mind so true, it's a good yeah. tool <laughs> it's handy <laughs> to process intelligence 40,000 times faster than the cognitive mind but that's where we default to is intelligence that one small analytical mind like that one Which small is, part yeah. of our intelligence left brain cognitive frontal lobe right so yeah 
Um, so the decision making analytical only, but the body gives us gives us that holistic intelligence of presence and instinct. And so when we can tune into the body, we can, I call it your bullshit meter. I don't know if you're allowed to swear on here, but so your BS meter. <laughs> so it's your ability to know you're someone's lying to you. It's your ability to know. It, yeah. It's like literally your an intuition is, is woven through your cells mm -hmm. and can speak louder than the noise because it's a sensation then, it's yeah, a true truth yeah then That's whatever crazy. randomness whatever ad whatever someone's trying to sell you whatever dating if someone's dating and the person's lying yeah. It's the part of you that's like, ding, 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 ding. Mm, then, there's no sure? information, yeah. <laughs> but you know to trust that. Yeah. So the body is a resource. The body is also where you digest emotions. You mm. don't actually process emotions in your head by thinking. So no? it's a resource. No. <laughs> oh, <laughs> nope. okay. You process by feeling. And so thinking and feeling are two different things. And so if you're thinking... And thinking mm -hmm. and thinking and thinking and thinking that actually um, drains your resources. That that overthinking actually drains your energy because mm -hmm. it's actually you need to just feel. But no one's been taught, not just. So I don't want to yeah. simplify or make this sound easy, easy. but mm -hmm. it is simple. But we haven't been taught it, so it is going to feel impossible to some to yeah. feel your feelings to completion to actually feel deep sadness let it move through your body yeah. come out the other side not broken or not crazy right that's the fear yeah exactly. or i don't have time for that i and have then, four kids right like people don't know how to feel feelings but the body is the key because i mean and and often when they when they are faced with like some traumatic events in their life then then only okay that's the light bulb moment okay am i am i what's happening now like yeah it's like you're so far away from your true essence of yourself but then yeah. when something happens like okay shit, what do i have to do right and but the problem <clears throat> is people don't have the resources when that's the something happens that's when they mm -hmm. have less resources but because they've already drained their life force which is yes. well like you said your your body and and everything and your heart and your spirit so the the three resources that we tune to are our body our heart and our spirit mm -hmm. and then we train the mind taming mm -hmm. and training the mind so that it then becomes a resource as well but right now most people are mind dominant so their mind is in fact draining their resources and that's where the burnout and the a lot of mental health is yeah exactly Depression. in my opinion a lot of mental health is actually mind dominance mind dominance yeah over right just then. over over in the mind and i'm not simple i'm not um minimizing but there is actual biochemical mental health that people mm -hmm. like actually need like the medical intervention. And then a lot of it is just lack of resources, lack of the body, lack of the heart, lack of spirit from societal norms. The mm -hmm. myth of normal Gabor Mate wrote this great book mm -hmm. that I met him in Toronto in 2013 for a four day workshop. And mm -hmm. he talked about writing this book back in 2013 and now the book's out now. So it took him that long to Ten really, years get it out and i think i don't know any data about this but from him but i would say it's just such a big undertaking to say look we're having a normal reaction to a toxic system so mm -hmm. nothing's wrong with you so i think in, when you say the worthless thing I'm, it's like nothing not is enough. wrong with you yeah 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 not you enough. are you're just trying to win at a game that's set against you and you, you know we we've, we've just been um there's so many layers to this about how we've gotten here and our, our, you know, like my mom and her, my grandmother couldn't Childhood, even get alone. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Like, so everyone has just been doing their best. So we want to build on all those amazing things from our, our ancestors, but also society's like goals of consumerism and everything like that. Like the, we really need to start waking up to find our own happiness and to not, be so easily manipulated that you could buy the thing mm -hmm. you know yeah so 
um, what are the, okay, so say you have, say <clears throat> you have three people coming to you right now. What are the top three tools that you actually teach your client first? Yeah. So, um, so now we've got your body, your heart and your spirit, right? So yes, the spirit is everywhere and it connects and it speaks your language. So like it's eternal. spirit will, to me, spirit spirit will eternal, start yeah. to come in. It's always there. It's ever not there. Yeah. Yes. So by coming, getting the body online and the heart. So heart breathing is when mm -hmm. you feel, you put your hands on your heart space, which is right in the middle of your chest. Check and then you. <laughs> well, it's good not to think of it as the chakra, but just like, you know, think of it as just like a little kid who's like, just felt something. And then they go like this, oh, you know, yeah, like yeah. something just so primal. Yeah yeah, yeah. 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 Like that you just. <laughs> grab it or you're like, Oh, you're so moved. It's as it's, yes. you watch anybody, they'll just do it. Yeah. So, um, they're all, they're all connected, but I like to call it the heart space versus chakra because then I, then it's its own space. It's the space of space. It's not a concept that people mm -hmm. can get locked into and get too in their mind about just side note, but just okay. this space, this space where it's not your physical pumping heart. It's mm -hmm. actually just this space here in the center between your lungs. And it's nice to think of your lungs as like these pillows of air that are bringing your attention to this space. So it's about your attention. Your attention is your power. Mm -hmm. And so we can focus attention. our attention at will and we can train our focus so anyone that's like oh i can't focus no it's trainable so it's like a mind muscle so we we take our focus and we feel the hand right so now we're feeling not thinking we feel the hand mm -hmm. feel and then we breathe and feel the space underneath the hand so the only thing to do because you can't get it wrong is to feel the space under the hand and breathe and notice and if like it takes a while if the mind, if we're in our mind a lot, we can even imagine taking elevator down from the mind, like the mind is here. So now our attention's coming down an elevator, mm -hmm. down, down, down. And then we can kind of feel it land. And then almost you get, you're so in the heart space that if you were to open your eyes, that you're looking out from your chest, like your attention and your, your focus is so in the heart space instead of here. Mm -hmm. And so we practice that to just bring the focus, feel, bring the focus, feel, bring the focus, feel. It's not glamorous. You're, you're not going to feel like one with the universe right away, but you're creating vibrational muscles, just like push-ups, just like running, just like eating broccoli, any boring thing you do that's good for you, you you're feeding that heart, heart space. And then it's a resource that when the thing happens, you now have that resource more online. Mm -hmm. And so that's okay. a big tool. Um, just feeling the sensations in the body, body sensation, feeling is the other one. So okay. that they go together. The other one would just like feeling your feet. Don't think mm -hmm. about your feet. Oh, okay. Feel. <laughs> so you have to yeah. be curious, right? So curiosity is, is like a superpower. Like it, 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 gets us out of needing to know and being on time and blah, blah, just curious space. So I'm yeah. just curious, how do my feet feel right now? Mm. The only way to know is to feel them. Yeah. So sometimes yeah. when my clients are really, really in their head, they're like, Oh yeah, my foot hurt yesterday. Cause I was walking too long. I don't care about yesterday. How does your foot feel right now? No. Right. So still see how easy the mind wants to come in and answer the question. They're like that kid in school. That's like, always wants to know the answer they're, You know, they always want to be relevant. And yeah. so that's a cute thing about the mind, but we're like, no, right now we're feeling the feet. So you have to be like a loving parent to your mind in a way. And so feel the sensations all through the body, feel your arms. This isn't, I didn't make any of this up. There's so many places, body, body scanning and yoga. But the problem is so many people are mind dominant during the yoga. So many people are mind dominant during the body scan so that you have to get no feel experience sensation. Uh, what's the temperature? What's the, um, even rhythm. Like sometimes I can feel like, okay, what, what would it feel like if I could feel blood? What would it, what would my bones feel like if I could feel them? 
right? Yeah. Like the curious. And then yeah. I, and then you like a little kid, like you kind of go. Oh, you, you, you really I don't know. be in tune with it. Like you can, sometimes you can even imagine or train yourself like, like you could feel the red blood cells running through you. Like I, yes. as, a kid, as a kid, I, I used to like wonder, hmm. But because once I knew like how it looks like, it's like that round thing. And then in science class, oh yeah, what does it feel for it to actually well? But then of course you get me um, yeah, being so absorbed with, with, with thinking here. Yeah, I, I was that before. So it's only recently yeah. that I've come to appreciate and really come back in. To be honest, I'm still learning. The reason of why course. I wanted to speak to so many people is to just hear what they have to say about these things. Yes, <laughs> yes. And then the other one is journaling. So um, journaling helps. If you if you go to my website, that's where um, I have a journaling sort of like here's how to journal and here are some prompts. But it's a technology to weave your resources together where you're in your body writing. Your hand mm -hmm. is connected to your heart chakra. So you're right that the heart chakra, like the these these energy systems are very powerful and worth knowing and working with. But the hand is connected to that. So you're writing. Don't write. Don't type actual writing ideally mm -hmm. doesn't have to look good <laughs> doesn't <laughs> who cares no one's gonna see it if you write something personal rip it up throw it out it's not a diary it's just the process of integrating mm -hmm. journaling down um and so as you're writing you're you're slowing down to the present moment with the mind and so you're starting to train the mind to be here so people get frustrated that they can't write as fast as they're thinking. Yeah. Yeah. And so I'm guilty of that too. Sometimes slow, allow the slow, mm -hmm. allow that rhythm mm -hmm. and, and let that train you into the present moment. Right. Versus yeah. this should be fast. Why? Yeah. This should be fast. <laughs> Why I should I blame myself? What? what? Why am I not writing as fast as I was uh, back in, like, when I was 17? Like, when you're in an examination hall, you got to commit that three hours, okay? But now it's just, you have so many things coming, but it's like, my hand is like, yeah, but I'm, I'm enjoying the flow right now. But again, the mind coming in and attacking. Yeah, and it's whenever okay. Whenever I want to be present, yeah. Yeah, it's okay to also feel crappy at the same time as you're noticing that there's actually some cool feelings here oh and i'm annoyed yeah you can be both and so this okay. desire for you said like what are things people are doing this toxic happiness and uh everything should be happy and good vibes and high vibes and we need to embrace everything in order to have those high vibes we can't pick and choose elbow out to. Yeah. the other human experience because they all have wisdom but mm -hmm. when they take over yes it becomes really hard for and I see it as a therapist uh, you know I see people struggle I've been there like I, you know we didn't get into that but I've been through a lot of trauma and I've been through a, I'm not yes. this perfect person that came out this way but I've been through having so much shame I don't even want to leave the house shame meaning you don't believe you're good enough right just and you don't mm. think th that thought you just think I can't possibly go to the grocery store right now like you mm. you're just paralyzed so yeah. I know and now we have this nervous system conversation where people are talking about your nervous system where the effects of your physiology of like not being motivated and all like all of these things go together so I've been there. So, uh, so these tools help bring the resources up so that we can deal with these challenges. It's not that we don't have the challenges. It's, yeah. it's to get resource to deal with the challenges. So let's take a step back since you mentioned about the strong market event. Actually, I wanted, one of the questions was that like, if you had to choose an event or events in your life where you, when you were at your lowest, what were those times and or what was that and and maybe you can walk through uh the how did you pull yourself out of it mm -hmm. um i i mean a big moment in my life was when my brother was a bully and he and so i also my whole family was very chaotic but he very intentionally, like three years older than me, I was about nine and he was um, 
you know, so we're like two and a half. So anyway, he was like a younger teenager and I was still a kid, like eight, nine, right. Where you're still a kid. Mm. And he would, he would bully me and, and just call me names and all these things. And I, I just didn't leave the house one summer. I just didn't leave. I just stayed in my room and I would get food and go back into my room and I would watch TV and I just didn't leave the house. And my parents were so checked out. They just thought, oh, that's just our kid being like, they didn't. They're being playful with each other. They didn't know that it's going to affect you up until your adulthood. Oh, they were just checked out. They just weren't even, they, they were just, just in their own drama and trauma frozen. that, yeah. So it was like, no way. So, basically. <laughs> yes, completely. So, and you know, I've talked to my mom about it since and everything, but that set me as like a deep shame, that deep mm. shame of not wanting to leave the house, not wanting to be seen, but not even knowing what it is. Right. And then you have to go to school. And yeah. then when you have that deep shame, you become, okay, well, I guess I'll be the good student. And I guess I'll, and that, and I was singing, so I'd be praised for singing. So I guess I have to do yeah, these you're things. Seeking validation and other things to make, yes. to, to compensate yourself for yes. whatever it is that your brother's calling you or making you feel yeah. about yourself. Yeah. Absolutely. So that was a very core moment, like a, a, a origin moment, right? And then um, after my dad committed suicide, I was actually finished. Oh, I, so I was 29. Sorry. Yeah. Okay. It was this weird time because I actually had gotten all these resources and I had this great community. And so how did I get out of it? So when I was a little girl, I didn't really get out of it. I just kind of survived and went to school and coped and all the things you know but as an adult at 29 I actually had already done my psychotherapy training and was in the middle of finishing my ontological coach training when this happened and mm. I went into like I was like half in survival or I was like 70 to 80 percent in survival as I was trying to reach be the room with that be in the world or, and like start a yeah. company and and be normal and pretend I'm fine and so I was bridging all of my things I'd learned and sort of challenging them and in a in a full-on trauma state of dealing with insurance companies dealing with my bully brother who you know like I was just really challenged and that was when I did my second psychotherapy training so I I was trained with them um, indigenous wisdom through shamans and um that is like that connection to nature and direct path to spirit just my entire soul aligns with that and that you could be taught in your dream state and i am like that makes sense to me so shamanism so i went to ireland and i went to peru oh my and the god three am shaman I next did you did you try ayahuasca well <laughs> and this is the thing so when i say shamanism now one you're kind of not supposed to because it's it's a sacred name, but it is also um, a lineage. It is a spiritual practice of right. that I, I hold with such high esteem of of exactly. anyone in their origin tradition and their their wisdom teachings. So, but for me, it's much more like just listening to spirit, just listening to how spirit talks to me, and then that brings me to Peruvian shamanism or different teachings and mentors and things that they we come together so ayahuasca plant medicine is great it's also another thing that people are grasping yeah if i just yeah the the, the truth is that you should be called the, like called right and called to it like mm -hmm. Like, it's just a sense of knowing, but people don't know how to feel the knowing. So they just do it because someone else said they should do it or because someone yeah, did it. Yeah, this is going to flip your life. So, but it's also yeah. an opportunity to, to get out of the mind, but it can be a, a very, it can be an amazing experience for people. But for a lot of people, they don't have the resources. Um, it can be wacky. So it's, it's another path to spirit, but you should have other paths to spirit that you should have. I'm tuning into my heart. You should have, I'm walking in nature and feeling like you should be creating a relationship to spirit. If you want to do plant medicine, anybody listening, start to create a relationship to nature and spirit. Now, then do the ceremony. Yeah. You'll be much more equipped and then keep with those habits because that's where spirit will talk to you. It isn't this one yeah. boom moment. Yeah. It's supposed to be integrated into life. And so I say many rivers to the same ocean, like 
everybody needs to just listen and follow and everything. I welcome all things that bring you to spirit and spirit works that way. And that spirit speaks your language. So if you feel spiritual when you're knitting, cause you're mm -hmm. like a spider weaving, yeah. then do that. Don't make yourself wrong for what lights you up and what lights you up is your spirit. So, mm -hmm, so, so don't make yeah. it so complicated or special, like special ceremony with a special shaman, like just <laughs> let spirit come to you in your world as your world exists and let what lights you up be what lights you up and do more of that that will yeah. be your path to spirit so so for me shamanism wasn't about plant medicine plant medicine now when i do it it just enhances what i already had yeah exactly to, to it's just connect, a... to to go beyond the veil of the mind I was already yeah. like that when I was a kid, dreaming and being a creator and a singer. Oh, like, yeah, I was already doing all the things, <laughs> talking to animals. True. I'm like, I am True. a Disney princess. <laughs> like, these are all my life stories. Like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, that's so true. <laughs> yeah. I mean, you just brought the perspective back. That's so true. Like, this is, we don't even need to wait for it because we already had it. Right because here we now. All, we have, we've always been a dreamer. Gosh, we've oh, forgotten about a lot of a lot of those things now. Yeah, but to <laughs> answer to quickly answer, that's when I did my second psychotherapy training. I came back from Peru. Three mm -hmm. shaman were like, "You, because they, because energy is beyond the mind, so they could see in my energy that I needed to work on my lower chakras. I needed to do more trauma healing." everything's mm. good. You're on your life path. You're listening to spirit. Cool. But your lower three chakras need some work. Three different, mm -hmm. or I think it was like three or five. Like it was evident that <laughs> I needed to bring some attention. So oh. <laughs> I was like, I would love to do another training in like PTSD and addictions and like just heavier, more complex psychological things. Cause I didn't feel confident as a psychotherapist in those areas. So then yeah. my psychotherapist, that, did you feel like it was going to trigger your own? Like your no, own I just, I just felt literally like confidence is like lack of skills. Right. So, mm -hmm. um, so just by the way, worth, worth and confidence are different. So like, I felt totally able to help, but I didn't feel like I had the skills. So the, the confidence required more skills. So that's where I'm like, oh, okay, I want to do a psychotherapy training. That psychotherapy right. that my next teacher was literally five blocks from where I lived in Toronto, starting her oh. program in two weeks. And that's how most of how I've done things like, oh, I'm going to do this. I let people know, hey, I want to do a psychotherapy training. Hey, I want to do a psychotherapy training. And then, oh, I know. And we're also in community. So we also, the other thing problems with society is this, I have to do it myself. But yeah, we're a community species. It's like that's so true. Yeah, we're, we we were born to be in, in tribes. We're, we're meant to connect. And where do we connect community? Yes, people? but don't leave yeah. yourself for others. Like, That's so true. We're, we're meant yeah. to be here. Okay, hey, in my wholeness and in my curiosity, I'm going to do a psychotherapy training. And then it's all a feedback loop, but we're meant to be in community. And that's what the other resource. So the book I'm writing now is about your body, heart, and mind, those resources. But the wow. next resource is going to be you. Yeah, this book is taking so a I, while so to write, by the way. <laughs> so it's, I did ask the right question. So I'm getting the sneak peek preview of what, what your next book uh, yes, is. Yes, <laughs> this is what I talk about. But the next step that it will be weaved throughout this book is your relationships, is how to be you in the world with others. So once mm. you're resourced, now... So with my clients, once they get resource, they come to me because they're like, everything I'm doing isn't working, yeah. but I know there's something more for me. Okay, cool. It's always that thing. There's something more. Yes. I just don't know what it is. Yeah. It's, yes. It's, it's, it's you, that. by the way. The other thing yeah. is you. And yeah. I help people come yeah. get that and then they can do anything, right? Because you're not seeking, you're not leaving yourself. You, you're like, I call, I call it tuning humans. So my next brand is tuning humans. So tuning humans because when you're finally just here's who I am and here's my body and here's my heart and and they know how spirit starts to work with them you'll start to see it work with you it comes to you and once you find you and you're like I'm good here and you just keep doing that and keep doing that spirit comes to you 
Yeah. And so um, tuning humans means like you're not broken. Nothing's wrong with you. Just, just boop, just boop, like just <laughs> come back. Tuning it, like tweaking it. But yeah, come back. Yeah. But to all of the resources you already are, to what is already here now, the wholeness of who you are now, which is to your point of your podcast can never be worthless because you're alive. Like the fact that you're breathing means you're not worthless. You matter. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. So you, your website's landing page, you were just talking about being intuitive, right? So what is the difference between intuition and regular thoughts? People mm. often say, use your heart, but not so much your head. Okay, we just talk about that. But how do we know when to be logical and how do we know when to follow your heart and be intuitive? Aha. Uh -huh. Well, see, there's a lot of assumptions in all of that as well. Exactly. So, <laughs> so I, 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 yeah, that, that was that, that that was me actually. <laughs> those are great and questions <laughs> and great assumptions, like the assumption of what the heart is, and 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 so what I'm going to say about that first, though. So your mm -hmm. intuition, hmm, Your intuition is one you have to get into the body. And so to discern, well, you have to slow down. So like, so let's say I'm coaching you. Let's just do you. Yeah. So yeah. let's say I'm coaching you. I'm like, okay, you want to, you get irritated when you can't write as fast. Well, take the time to write slower and write, what am I not seeing right now? What am I not mm -hmm. seeing right now? We'll, we'll bubble up, um, the stuff from your mind that's keeping you from seeing truth because intuition will just tell you the truth and intuition will also just tell you what you need to know when you need to know it. So if we need to know everything right now, your intuition might just turn off and just be like, we're not going to play with you because it's, it's not serving you. Your into your spirit will never give you things that are not in your highest. Oh, and usually God, what we want. So powerful. Mm hmm. <laughs> It'll never. So you can have a question, mm -hmm. but it won't answer you because it loves you. Like it, it, it yeah. will guide you in other ways in random moments. So watch for the random moments and write them down. So to grow your intuition, create an evidence journal. Oh, I had this thought and I thought to bring the umbrella, but it was sunny out. So I didn't bring the umbrella. It was dumb, right? Yeah. No, yeah. what happens? It starts Five raining at 4 p.m. Yeah. <laughs> when when you're about to go from the grocery store to the thing, the intuition is beyond space and time, and it will talk to you yeah. through beyond space and time. So if you're not there, if you're just like thoughts are like ping pong balls, right? Thought and they're questioning and they're doubting, and intuition isn't yeah. noisy like that. It will find ways to get to you <laughs> that aren't yeah. the noise through a show you're watching, through the podcast you happen to put on, through something your your friend says randomly, like through like life spirit will talk to you through whatever will get through. Um, so that's the answer is that your intuitive voice isn't really a voice like it, it is life talking to you. It's like life texting you sometimes too. It'll just be like a boop, like message. The mind might want to add noise to it, but mm -hmm. often it's like a impulse. It's like a, oh, I shouldn't go to this thing or, yeah. you know, whatever is going on. Sure. But it's like Are always there. Yeah. yeah, it's always there. Your heart, by the way, is misunderstood often as emotional um yeah. like passion is misunderstood yeah. as love exactly so oh, when people say yeah. oh i was listening to my heart but they were really just listening to their want mm. what they wanted to happen Woo. i think a lot of people feel that <laughs> <laughs> so don't confuse it because <laughs> your heart might actually say no that's not for you right again i'm getting called out here okay perfect so so to answer your question your heart is very neutral and it will 
it will, everything is already whole and complete. So if you think you need something to be whole and complete, it won't support that either. Mm. But it will bring you back to being whole and complete. Like, let's say if someone's dating somebody, this is what, you know, like, um, matters of the heart literally like right it, where we yeah, get yeah. really personal and we're like oh my i need you to like me uh mm-hmm. i get this way too i act like when i i act like a little kid and suddenly i'm 11 but i'm actually a 41 year old woman but i forgot and i'm like i don't know how to talk right now so we have to like own all of those humanness i call it our humanness right like just these we're not always going to be on i'm not always going to be jenna the spiritual teacher coach person like i'm a human woman Mm -hmm. living in the world with you so like matters of the heart get 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 messy because we there's well i'll tell you this there's your heart space which is everything's already whole and complete so you don't need that person to be more whole and complete or even for love because you're already love you're already love yeah but you might want companionship, and that's very honest too. I might want to have more fun. That's I true. might want to have sexual yeah. things, you know. Exactly. Like that's yeah, all yeah. Yeah. in the realm of desire. That's all amazing to ha- want yeah. and have. But if you mm-hmm. want the thing, because that's the only way to get the thing is through that person or that job or that dress or that. I get obsessed about things too. Like, oh, I need this. Yeah, and then I'll. I'll internet research it and da 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 yeah, and, and like, like yeah and, and not go to my spirit and be like do I really need this do I, because yeah, do I, <laughs> that, yeah yes because my ego is like on a tizzy and so we can none of that's wrong it's all part of the human experience but human, what I, yeah so to own being human is spiritual to that would be something I would want people to know, like your whole human experience and noticing it and coming back. And what, what's, what do I really want here? What would be the, me at my highest right now? How do I really want to be in these next two hours when you're in an ego flare up coming back faster, being able to stop, but own the whole human experience. Cause that's actually how life is teaching us and healing us at the same time. Well, you know yeah so you we were talking about like being confident right so how i don't know if you had ever had moments where you were not confident before but what are um, these yes. steps <laughs> <laughs> just yesterday yeah okay. like, just, yesterday. Okay. Okay. <laughs> just yesterday okay yes, no <laughs> what happened <laughs> I don't even, um, oh, I was, I was working on a song and, uh, and it just wasn't going well. And so, yeah, no. Yeah, so <laughs> what, 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 what are the steps that anybody should do or can learn to be more confident in basically areas of their lives? Yeah. Um, a hundred percent keep your promises to yourself. So your self relationship to me. So when you Mm -hmm. say confidence, Mm -hmm. I think people think people with a strong self relationship are confident. And so I know I will explain. So (laughs) if somebody has a strong self relationship, they know what makes them work and they keep promises to themselves and they do what makes sense for them. They do what works for them. They treat themselves with esteem. So when people say self esteem, it's, um, a moving target. Do you know, am I doing the things gently in a non-militant way that make me my highest expression? Am I getting enough sleep? Am I drinking enough water? Am I, am I doing the things that make me function at Mm -hmm. my highest and confidence will extend from that self relationship naturally. And then you're just free to make mistakes. You're free to be wrong. You're free to, so confidence has to come from humility and that you're good enough. So worth as well. Like yeah. It's okay to get that note wrong. It's actually encouraged. It's consistency. It's not Ooh. confidence isn't sexy. It's consistency over time. It's stupid small decisions daily. Boring. No one on Instagram is watching you 
make these micro decisions. You're mm -hmm. watching you. You're you. So that self-relationship to me grows mm -hmm. confident. What habits make me me? Not someone else. Take some, take, cause we're in community. Oh, you know, that person's trying this thing. Let me try that on like a, like a dress, like, like jeans. Yeah. Oh yeah. It kind of fits. I'm just going to do it once a month though. Okay, cool. But you know, what really works for me is like, so for me, um, uh, you can, if anyone here is there, just like DM me or email me. There's the well being checklist where I write down the 10 habits every day that make me, me. And so I have. Uh, a certain amount of sleep, certain how I keep my environment clean. Cause when I get lazy, I'll not do the dishes or I'll leave this and I'm not doing it to be Martha Stewart. I'm doing it because it, 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 it keeps me in tune. Mm -hmm. Um, so I know the habits and I've practiced them. Like how much water writing do I write every day? Not anymore, but like really the honest truth is I do write every day. It's a sentence here or this or that. Um, the things, the habits that make you more you, the walk in nature that's 10 minutes, it doesn't have to be 60 minutes, the the breathing techniques that are 30 seconds that don't have to be 15 minutes. Like people have this all or nothing thing, but just start to mm -hmm. experiment with what works for you as you. And as you do those things, you will feel more confident because you'll you're going to build that, that self-relationship and you're going to build that self-esteem and self-trust so that it's not contingent on. So people that are, think confidence is about other people, it's not. It's that I can, I can fail in front of you and be okay. Mm. Maybe bruised. <laughs> Maybe yeah, bruised. bruised or broken, I'll be okay. I'm going to be okay. Yeah. Yeah. That's real I'll confident. Another day. <laughs> yes. Yes. Yeah. So people think it's this thing. Or it's a personality type. People think oh, I'm confident. Oh, you're so confident. How are you so confident? I'm like, I get it. But I really, the confidence they're seeing now is I don't think about it. I am just being me. <laughs> I don't need you. Mm -hmm. I don't need to change me in this moment. Now, sometimes I do get insecure and I will feel like I need yeah. to change me in that moment. And then the key is to watch that come back, bring it to your journal. Why did I tell that person that thing? That was so weird. And and don't try not to judge, but just mm. notice, oh, I was really leaving myself there. I really thought I needed to be smarter. I really thought I needed to be cuter. I really thought I needed to be dumber. Like, how did I need to change for that situation or person? Come back and stop it. <laughs> just like, don't do it anymore. <laughs> So it's, it's, it's more, it talk, uh, in essence, it's just about being in yourself, like knowing when to like really walk, um, how to, maybe not walk. It's like when you actually start seeing other people or outside it and, and then your mind's racing and it's just, okay, is it not associating yourself with that thought and then coming back being like you said maybe breathing <laughs> like that's yeah the, the you would focus. do all the things like yeah. come back breathe be like oh wow i noticed i was a little off there and then explore yeah and and not need to get it right or wrong just explore and your this is the thing your resources will start to grow that wisdom that self coaching, you know, so many people will just come the just the answer will just arise and like, Oh, okay. Um, not needing to get it right. So confidence is like, there's knowing who you are and being that in the world. And that's what's so intriguing and magnetic about celebrities and stuff, because they've done so much work to be that magnetic, yeah. that they wouldn't be there. Then there's skill. They so, hadn't they worked right? on themselves? Yeah. And then they do the thing. And so now they're putting you, like you see Brad Pitt. You, look, he's beautiful, blah, 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 blah. So charismatic. The hours that man has put in, that boring crap that he has done day in and day out. Like the most sexy people are just boring. <laughs> like they just do boring things regularly. Consistently. Yeah. Curate their craft. And then that's the shiny. That's the 
And then it you do the hard work that just means consistent, regular work so that you can, you know, like in a song, you learn the notes so you can then fly and just go, go be in the moment and share and tell a story and not think about the notes. Most people are so stuck. Like, so if they were a song, they're so thinking about the notes all the time that they don't get to the fun part, Yeah, which is singing, which is the that magic. I do right? sing. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's really boring to watch a perfectionist singer. Someone who's trying to get it right is boring to watch. Just by the way, like. That's so true. Like, yeah. I was, I was um, interviewing another guest and he was like, um, it's like, <clears throat> late michael jackson was a perfectionist and then uh prince is the um the more on the artsy side so he mm -hmm. was like telling me like okay my, if michael it was like oh i gotta get this right bum, 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 just like bruce Lee. but then but then the other one it's like yeah i'm feeling this way today let me let me right let me do my my concert but you need both yeah. so like prince yeah. would have the brute so like it's interesting because like so perfectionism Brene Brown does a great job of making these distinctions as well but perfectionism is when it starts to be like to me perfectionism strangles out that magic part so that you've done all the reps you've done all the steps so if Michael's done well right he is mastery all those uh, you know he does have both things but when it starts to crunch in and, and strangle the magic where suddenly it's just steps getting it right getting it right getting it right versus the steps as a vehicle for spirit and magic to come through and that's what it should be right and then so the prince being a creator more than a technician which is what makes people super magnetic yeah um that is what's moving through him that is unencumbered that mm -hmm. creative flow um so perfection will only i was just writing about this about like um your ego is motivating you, your ego motivating you about being the best, being better than that person, or I'll show them is actually we're gonna, amateur. That'll keep you amateur because it'll just always be just about getting it right. And then people with mastery, it's about the gift. It's about the full on. It's about, you know, like Serena Williams playing tennis, like just, like, it's yeah. just, Ooh, that's why we go watch it. We're just yeah. like, what is happening right now? Like, <laughs> That is why, and we all want that for ourselves in some way, That's true. you know, and you look at someone like a Serena Williams, like born into that family with the dad, with the, you know what I mean? Those conditions that those resources, yeah. her sister yeah. doing it to the community, then all the challenges, the racism, the things like going yeah. into white people world, doing tennis, like it's amazing with yeah. all of that, like primal unencumbered human energy that's just like busting out through tennis through reps and reps and reps of boring boring work but then you can do boring things like in the karate kid you know like he's like wax on wax off you could do boring things however you decide to do the boring things that's when you're doing from being so you can actually mm -hmm. doing from being yeah. right sometimes yeah. it's boring you sometimes people that yeah. Yes. Yeah. Sometimes I go for a walk just because I'm like, Jenna, just I'm just like a walk and a dog. I'm just like, I need to take my my human body for a walk. Mm -hmm. And I walk it and it's boring and I don't really wanna and I it's I'm better for it after. And then other times I'm like, oh my gosh, this is amazing. Oh my yeah, god. Yeah. Like, right. And and so you can't ever really plan for it, but but you do it anyway. Yeah. So, I mean, the, the confidence is interesting that way because people always say I'm so confident and I'm like, maybe it is just a soul essence thing too, being a performer and there's a certain energy we all have that we emit to other people. But I think it's, it's because I don't need you to like me and in doing so, well, I, I want people to like me. It's still <laughs> insecure about it, but I don't need you to like me. And I think that creates a freedom for other people to be themselves. You know what I mean? Like, I think, right. It creates this like space where like that person can be more themselves and in doing so they feel better and they call that me being confident, but it's really, they feel better in their own presence to be themselves. And so it's something I've noticed 
something I've noticed about what people think is me being confident. But I'm like, I, you actually just feel more confident being with me because I don't need you to be a certain way. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You're allowed to be yourself when you're near me. It's like, but I see through you that you're confident. Beautiful. So if you could tell one people to change their lives, what is it? I think we talked about it just now, but then if we could bring it back. <laughs> I mean, the, the so-called simple thing to do is to know that nothing's wrong and nothing's missing and what you need will present itself when it's needed. So learn how to listen okay. with your body, with your heart, like listening on all levels. Thinking is one way of intelligence interacting with you, but I think it's more about listening. Okay. And don't take it so freaking seriously. Like life is alive, yeah. right? And we talk about music. It's a play. It's called playing music. It's a play. And people it's are just so serious. Yeah. 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 Playing guitar. That's why like, yeah, you should be playing. Yeah. You should be experimenting. Just like what you said, experimenting, experiments. But in that, experimenting. In that, in that ex experiments, you're also playing because you're, you're trying things in life. And that's the beautiful thing about being alive. That's life. Yeah, exactly. And, and yeah, that, watch and animals that, playing. Exactly. And for that reason, you're worthy. <laughs> so Jenna, what keeps you up at night? Or do you sleep well at night? <laughs> Netflix. Netflix <laughs> keeps me up at night. <laughs> or my cat. Um, okay. <laughs> my cat that comes and wants to cuddle at like 3 a.m. I'm like, okay. Um, I... I not, not a lot. If anything, it's just my inner child being a brat and not wanting to go to bed. I, I'm, I don't, I'm not, oh, what's the word? I'm not haunted by a lot these days. Like I'm not. And I think the closer we get to living in harmony with spirit and trusting spirit and knowing that we're all connected to spirit. That's our, that's our safety. That's our safety. That's it. Like I can do that because I, I have entrained and done the connected to myself and then followed the steps so many times that I can just know I can go to bed and I'm okay. And that whatever arises tomorrow, like, I've, you're, you're I've got this. Yeah. yeah. Like that. And that actually, honestly, that's a whole other level of confidence is like when you're just like, I'm connected to spirit. God or whoever you, however you relate to spirit. To me, the word spirit feels like spirit. So I use the word spirit. <laughs> and so yeah. Use the word that works for you. But yes, that like, you know, and, and it's so much, there's so many traditions that will, you know, in the Bible, like when you walk with God or if you know who you're walking with, like that say that. But so to answer your question, every so often I overthink about what I should have got done or not got done or my inner critic will, mm -hmm. will come up. Yeah. If I do something really embarrassing, that will keep me up as well. But for the most part, not a lot. <laughs> not a lot. Yay. <laughs> okay. So um, if you could create or have a quote right now that you could leave to the audience listening and to the world as you know, a legacy by Jenna, what would that be? Mm. Your purpose is to be you beautiful enough said <laughs> Your to be you. so listeners there's a lot of there's a lot yeah, to unpack like, there <laughs> but that's the quote yeah so if people were like skipping this podcast to the end they just want to know okay what's the takeaway and then they would have to listen to the whole podcast okay because we talked that's a lot the point about i'm like actually like yeah. it's not a self-explanatory <laughs> quote i guess the second quote that has that has more self-explanatory would be um you're you're not but wrong I, like that quote. Broken. I love it yeah yeah i do too so but like layers in, in it like yes it's so intrinsically int woven into yourself you what was it <laughs> your purpose is to be you. To be you. So many things. 
you can unearth from that. Like you, you only know, like if you take the time to sit and ponder. Your only purpose is to be you. So, so get to being you. So each day, does this habit work for me? Is this bring life to me? Does this drain life for me? And just micro observations, journal, tune in, listen, and and then your life entrains with you. It's not as hard. Yeah. Then then it's not as hard as when life starts to entrain with you and you start to entrain with life, all that overthinking and efforting and working hard in the wrong directions, you get to reclaim that energy. So yeah. So your purpose is to be you. Yes. Beautiful. Well, Jenna, I think we're good with time. <laughs> yeah, I'm yeah. good. I had I had extra time, so I wasn't uh, worried. But uh, that was a great conversation, and I enjoyed nice. your questions and your humility and um, what's the word? Transparency in oh. in the conversation. Oh, thank you. I really enjoyed the session. That I like it for when you said you're enjoying this, which I am, and and yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and I like the people when they when they see me. It's like Nicola, you laugh so loud. Like I don't care. This is me. Why? <laughs> uh, yes. Yes. Laugh, <laughs> laugh loud. My mom has this loud laugh. Like I can hear her across the room and know where she is. It's like a beacon. I'm like oh, <laughs> my mom's over there. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, so it's 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 a really beautiful conversation, Jenna. I I really re learned a lot from you, and I'm amazing. Just, it's the whole idea of me talking to all these guests, and every single time another person comes in, I just it's just sometimes I, it reaffirms what what I was um, feeling before, but I just wanted to see if other people are feeling the same way, and then then you feel it in your deep core, your soul, like okay, yes you are in that direction. The confirmation, the confirmation yeah. versus, uh, I'm going to sing, a, I'm going to sing for you because I don't want to leave you without saying, because I, I said I would, um, but confirmation versus validation. Validation is like, I need this sign to, to tell me what to do. Confirmation is like, I already knew this. And now I really know it go for more of that so this just made me think of i just watched the whitney houston movie oh and haven't <laughs> and so the theme i haven't sang this song so this is my super vulnerable moment because i don't even i haven't sang this song in years but i figure i'll just do a line from it um from the greatest level of all that whitney sang um okay <laughs> let me go i decided long ago Never to walk in anyone's shadows. If I fail, if I succeed, at least I live as I believe. No matter what they take from me, they can't take away my dignity. Because the greatest love of all is happening to me. Love of all inside of me. Can you please okay. send it to me? Actually, because okay. it's amazing. Okay, okay. <laughs> okay, okay. I, I'll I'll clip it and I'll send it over to you as well. Oh, this is so beautiful. Thank you so much, Jenna. So, Mario, you can sleep better tonight. <laughs> Yay! Mario's like that. He's just looking at me like that. Oh, uh, what was that, Mom? Aww. It's so beautiful, Jenna. Thank you so much. I feel so moved. That that that's one of the moments where I said. <laughs> thank you. I feel, I feel. All right. Thank you so much, Jenna. So I I followed you on Instagram, um, and and 
yeah, it, it, it'd be nice. Maybe next time I can invite you for another another episode. Maybe we'll talk about it. Wonderful. <laughs> well, it's great to know you. I'm glad you enjoyed the singing. It was really fun to yeah, watch. Yeah, <laughs> and, and this is more like a, a, a conversation at the same time, therapy as, as well as coaching. So it's like everything is woven in and beautiful. <laughs> another friend. I gained another friend from another side of the world. Like, we're 12 hours apart, right? So it's like 11. Yes. That's like, yeah, 12, 12. <laughs> Yes. Yes, <laughs> exactly. So yeah, so get a good sleep as okay. it was really fun chatting with you. Yeah. Thank you. You have a good day too. Thank you. Okay. Bye. Bye. -bye. <laughs>